Those of you who've been watching my mailbags for a while will know that I've accumulated a small pile of, uh, of USB cables for powering stuff, like we all do. And I've also got uh, some, uh, some connectors, some of the female connectors, so that we can connect them up to a test rig of my own devising. Now then, what I'm testing for is not the data capability that just works or it doesn't work. What I'm testing for is can they actually handle a charging current? For instance, for charging my phone, the one that you're using here to uh, watch this. Um, devices these days tend to charge at like over an amp. Uh, I think my tablet can charge it up to two amps. Um, and that's just using, uh, these USB micros, not even getting into USB C, um, like that one there, because it can negotiate a higher power and higher current or higher voltage. But what I want to check is, is, are these things actually capable of, uh, being used for charging at any reasonable rate? Because those wires look pretty skinny. This one and this one are dollar store cables. Um, this one and this one and that one are from eBay. That one came with a power bank. This one is a Samsung, no, uh, where is it? Yeah, this one is a Samsung branded cable. Uh, came with a phone. This one is a Blackberry branded cable. Obviously came with a phone too. Um, so my testing methodology is going to be I'll wire this uh, female A jack up to my power supply, which is pretty stable voltage output, and I can monitor the current on it as well. Uh, because the current is going to be the same anywhere in a circuit, you know, it's just as easy to monitor it there. And I don't care if it's 100% accurate, as long as it's consistent from one cable to the next. Um, however, in my previous playing with this thing, it is very close. Close enough, anyway. Um, to minimize the influence of my test rig in this, I'm going to make up some short wires to um, to reduce the losses, the resistive losses. And to do that, I'm going to use this old PC power supply cable, which is 20 gauge wire. I'm just going to use short lengths of it, but 20 gauge wire is going to be heavier than anything that's in there. And the shorter I can keep it, the more realistic this test is going to be. And the same thing at the other end, um, I'm going to connect these guys to a power resistor because I don't want to, to cook a small resistor. Obviously I'm going to be pulling well, hopefully an amp. So I don't really want to, uh, uh cause smoke and fire. It's not unintentionally. It's all good to do that normally. So I've got two resistors here that I found out of my assortment, a seven and a half watt ohm and a 10 ohm resistor. And based on their, um, their tolerances and whatnot, I thought I'd get fairly close to a, a decent load here. So that is as close as you're going to get to 5 ohms. Let me just try and get closer on the stab onto this and get through the crud. 5.03 ohms. That's pretty close. So, with a little bit of ohms law magic, uh, 5 volts over 5 ohms equals 1 amp. So that's what this thing is going to draw. And then I'll be able to measure with, again, the expensive voltmeter that I borrowed from work, what the actual voltage is here, because that's going to be here, give us the voltage drop through the cable. We'll subtract that from, from the voltage that we, uh, or we subtract, uh, yeah, that from the voltage going into it over here. And that'll tell us our losses. Right? Right. So the first thing to do. I don't think this is too exciting. I don't, uh, I don't know. Do you want to watch me cut wire and solder? It'd be easier if I hadn't lost my wire cutters. Later that same evening. 
Okay, so... Ah, I was going to measure that. Okay, uh, so let's turn this on. And I'll measure the voltage at the back, at the coming right off the power supply. Four. Come in. Okay. And turn it up until it's exactly five. Okay, so there we go. We can agree that that's as close to 5 volts as we're going to get. This happens to say 5.11, but we'll just go with that. There's the current reading. Okay, so with this short little cable that came with the power bank, plug him in. Okay, that's reading 1 amp there. Probably should have put some meter socket or something on here. So that is 4.48, shall we call it? So that's got about a half a volt drop across it at one amp load. For a really short cable, that's not performance. 4.51. So that's pretty much the same thing. Ooh. 4.30. 4. Should we call it 4.31? Be generous. Wow, that's not great. 4.70. That's the best one that we've had so far. What? 3.5? That's horrendous. 4.46. That's not too bad. Let's call it 4.16 just to be generous. Okay, let me just clear the deck here a little bit and get my results set up. All right, here's the rogues gallery. From best over here, the Samsung uh, cable that came with the Samsung phone. Second best, the Blackberry branded cable that came with the Blackberry phone. And then the next one is this one that came with a power bank, although that is really disappointing for a cable that short. It shouldn't be losing that much power. The next two are a couple that, oh no, this is this one that I got off eBay that came with the USB-C adapter. Um, and then the two from my local dollar store. And finally, the cheapest one I could find on eBay. It's just not worth the effort. It's just, that's... A lot of stuff won't even run off of that. I don't even know why you'd want that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that was vaguely informative. Um, the At the very least, the uh, I hope the testing method is useful to somebody. Um, obviously, you're not going to be buying these exact same cables. Although, if you want a good charging cable, stick with the ones that came with your phone. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.